Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Friday, June 17. She's flipped and now she's getting stripped. And I wanted to walk you through a tool that I am using. We use this sparingly. This is marketed as the silent stripper. It is a uh, main advantage that it will not heat the paint beyond 1000 degrees, which means if we're dealing with lead paint, it will not vaporize. We don't have to worry about that concern. Uh, I'm using it here for two reasons. One, it's very quick. It's, it's quite aggressive. You would not want to use this stripper on a lap strike boat, uh, any decks that are plywood, um, or I wouldn't use it on topside planking or transom planking because it's very, very difficult to know when enough is enough. And if you go beyond that, you actually burn the wood. And it's very, very difficult to sand your topside planking deeply enough to get through that layer and still have it flat. The other reason I'm using this, and let's turn the camera so that we can get an idea of what we are trying to do. I think you see that that paint looks quite oil soaked. And in fact, you can actually see the oil glistening on it. At issue here is whether or not we can save these planks. At this point, uh, with, uh, with the oil running pretty clearly all the way through the planks up until this joint for sure, um, and then there's a joint here, this plank can't be saved. I'm almost certain this plank can't be saved. Uh, I'm hoping for this one because this runs all the way to the bow. Um, I'm pretty sure this one will have to be replaced. We may be lucky up there. How do I know that? Well, by using the silent stripper and trying to quit before I start a fire, But as the paint comes off, there's a telltale sort of shiny, glistening character to it. I think you can see it across the piece. But also, as you take the paint off, you can see the actual oil coming up with it. Look at that. It's just really oily. Hope I'm not giving everybody a headache, but um, the paint is not adhered to the wood at all. If I move to a spot, oh, let's say right in here, where I think the paint's integrity is uh, remains, and leave the so-called silent stripper in place until it heats up the uh, paint beneath it, and the only way we tell is, is that it starts smoking. I, I, I've tried timing it. I've tried uh, putting some kind of a thermometer next to it. None of that works. It's just a matter of you can begin to see smoke is coming up. Let's let it go just a little bit more. All right. Here, the paint is sound, but as you see, what I can take off I'm getting, I, I am getting the, all the way down to the wood in a few places, but here I can clearly see a primer, an older bottom coat, and the most recent bottom paint, anti-fouling paint. So this paint is, has still adhered to the wood. Whereas up here, even though I, this is all cooled off, Right? You see no evidence of multiple layers because none of it is adhered to the wood any longer. 
Well, that's telling me here's planking that cannot hold cannot hold paint. And this boat already, in fact, as you look at this bottom, I believe the owner told me she was last painted, I can't remember, two years ago? And there are big cancerous flakes that have come off everywhere. Here you can really see the oil. It's just bubbling up out of the wood. The heat is drawing the oil out of the wood. There's a, there's a plank destined for somewhere else other than back on this boat. And of course the issue with that is that we sacrifice originality. We increase our carbon footprint because we are not recycling this old plank. This, this has no use for anything other than maybe a campfire. Um, because it, if it won't hold paint, it has no value in and around a wooden boat. Uh, but the other aspect is we'll end up buying a lot of new mahogany and milling it so that uh, it is usable when we begin laying down the final planking on what will be a true 52. Here we're uh, gazing at the aft plank that uh, I've been stripping uh, while the camera's been running, uh, where the oil just bubbled up and oozed out of the paint and it went immediately to bare wood. And the next plank forward, and as you can see, it is, this paint has adhered. This board we can save, thank goodness. But, people should be careful taking shortcuts because the shortcuts can come up and bite them in the you know where uh, later uh, into the future. Look at this right here. One of these two planks ended up being short, and I, there's no way I can tell which one. So rather than saying, well, I can use this plank the next course up, where the first plank from the transom is a good deal shorter and install it properly, or I can rip a little piece of mahogany run the grain this way, run some fasteners through it, and say, there, it'll be covered with paint, nobody will see this. Well, guess what? When you take the paint off, everybody will see this. This is absolutely indefensible. Just absolutely, and this violates every single principle of uh, wood boat preservation, restoration, whatever you want. Um, I can promise you that little strip of wood won't be there when we're finished. So that's where we are on Friday, June 17. Beautiful weekend waiting for us. But in the meantime, I get to play with the silent stripper. Thank you so much. Bye bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.